So there's a recent post from the Replit CEO saying, I no longer think you should learn to code. And this post got a lot of exposure and there's been tons of videos kind of popping up, kind of talking about that post. And there's also been a lot of gloomy, you know, the job market is just not very good in general. And also just the software engineering jobs have been slowly in the decline over the past five years. You see videos like this, is this the end of software engineers? You got posts like this, the rise and fall of software engineers. So if you're a junior or you're like trying to get into this industry, maybe you're currently getting a computer science degree with all the recent changes with AI and then like the terrible job market, there's been tons of layoff over the past like two years from big companies. There's been layoffs or firing and they have been canceling government contracts, which means a lot of software engineers who work in government are losing their jobs. Overall, it's just not a very positive vibe in this industry, but I do want to kind of give you my insights as to do I think you should still learn to code? And my answer would probably be yes. I don't think AI in the industry, like I feel like this is just like a, um, a, a temporary downturn, I hope. Maybe like a self-correction over the COVID errors. I do think during COVID, like stuff was getting a little bit crazy. Like they were giving people tons of money. They were hiring everybody, trying to get as many software engineers as possible. And then when COVID went away, like I feel like the job market kind of did a self-correction which is normal. Um, but then AI came out and then now AI is basically threatening our jobs because we have these AI agents that basically write all the code for us. And I want to kind of give you my perspective. I've been coding in the industry since 2013 professionally. And I used to take a lot of pride and joy in like becoming good at typing accurately and typing fast and also being able to refactor code and use my IDE and navigate efficiently. Um, but recently over the past like year or two with these tools such as Cursor coming out and we have a Claude 3.5 and Claude 3.7. These AI models are becoming very, very good. Gemini 2.5 for like writing code where I would say the ability to write the code is no longer that big of an issue. One thing I'm seeing with AI is that it's actually enabling people who might not be very good at typing or very good at, you know, using their IDE. And now you can have these AI systems generate more code in five or 10 seconds than any human could ever type out by hand. And to me, that's like a secret weapon that could be unlocking the door for productivity for so many people if they start utilizing these tools and becoming very good at them. But also at the same time, you need to recognize that a lot of these AI models hallucinate. They're going to give you bad code and the code they generate could have security vulnerabilities. It's going to generate code that just isn't that maintainable. I've been using Cursor now for, I think, you know, over like six months and I've been using Copilot and other in IDE code completion tools. And it's only been until recently that the accuracy of these tools has become good enough where I kind of trust it most of the times, especially with web development. If you're building out a website, I would say that the code flow and the logic is usually pretty straightforward, right? You make a page, you probably add a form, that form submits some data. Maybe you do a little bit of client-side validation for that. You send over the data to the back end, you authorize and do authentication checks on the request. You verify and parse the data that came in to make sure it's good. You do a database query. Maybe you send some data back to the user. It's a very well known pattern, right? This we've been doing this pattern for a long time in this software engineering web development industry. And so AI has had a bunch of training on these models and code bases. So it kind of knows, okay, this is a page. We can make a request. We can do all this stuff. So I think AI is very good for like web development. I haven't tried it too much for other things. I've tried it for making like a 3D game and it just didn't make too much progress. You have to basically keep on prompting it. You have to keep on trying different approaches so it actually understands what you want. And the more experience you have, the better you can be at giving it context and giving it the information that it needs so they can successfully output the code that you need it to output. Okay, so again, going back to the original topic, should you learn to code? Again, I would say in this current state, yes. I think that these AI agents are not there yet. They're still generating it's kind of sloppy code and you have to have someone who's overseeing that code. Now is learning your IDE and becoming super efficient at your IDE as important as it once was to become a good developer? I don't think so. I think now you can have code basically be auto-generated for you, but the key is you have to actually understand what's going on with that code. You still need to review that code. You need to read through it line by line and accept the code you think is good and also reject the code that you know is bad. And in order to be able to do that, you actually have to have a very good understanding of how code works. And to understand how code works, typically you have to have written it yourself. At least from my perspective, you don't write the code yourself and try to build these systems yourself and spend hours and days debugging things. You don't truly understand what's going on. 
So yes, I still think you need to learn to code and there's probably going to be a lot of projects that are going to be completely rewritten once people have generated like, you know, thousands of lines of code or hundreds of thousands of lines of code using AI. And they realize that now it's reached a point where the AI agents can't even stay up with the code base. They can't even understand the code base. So as an example, the last project I was on, it was about half a million lines of code. So 500,000 lines of code, it's probably more than that. I don't think I could have loaded it up with cursor and have cursor index every single file. And then I probably couldn't have asked it to add in a feature without knowing the code base. Understanding the code base from a holistic standpoint is very important. And I have found it very useful when using something like cursor and AI agents, because the more context you can give the LLM, the better results it's going to produce. But the only way to give it the context is to truly understand the code that is being written. And so there is where you need an expert, someone who actually understands the code, can understand the thousands of files and how they're all kind of linked together and structured. Because I really don't think the LLMs truly understand your code base. I think they're just prediction engines. And all they do is they try to insert tokens based on some other tokens they see in this code. And I don't think they can truly grasp how, you know, the web and interconnected web of functions and modules and classes actually work. Maybe they do. You know, you can't really peel into an LLM and truly understand if it knows what's going on. But I think as a, a coding perspective, I can look at code in my mind. I have like this mental 3D map of like, okay, this component calls this component. This can be segmented over here from this different module. Like you start getting like this weird visualization in your head of the code base. And I think the only way that you can do that is if you have the experience. So I guess if I wanted to readdress his statement of why he doesn't think you should learn to code, I think it's kind of disingenuous because there is so much more that goes into building out software other than just coding, right? Writing code is just one part of it. Understanding the, the code base from a holistic standpoint is very important. Understanding how to document that and explain it to other developers is important. Understanding the whole life cycle, how to write tests, how to get this set up in a CI CD pipeline. I guess overall, if we're going to go back to a statement of, I don't think you should learn how to code. I just don't agree with it right now. I don't think LLMs are at the point yet where it can fully replace anyone other than maybe junior engineers. Now I will agree that LLMs have made me become more productive as a coder. Like I can churn out much more code in an eight hour workday than I could before. And the only limitation is basically how fast I can review the code because I do review all the code that is added to my code base because that's the only way you can make a maintainable system. But with that being said, I will say that I think it's going to be a little bit more challenging for a junior engineer or someone who's fresh out of college to get hired at some of these companies, especially since the job market is actually like not doing too good for software engineers. So I guess I would say just try to stay positive Again, try to learn how to code using these AI tools and also make sure you understand the code that's being written. Someone eventually is going to have to maintain these code bases, right? You can't just hire someone and have them just continuously prompt and accept code and prompt and accept code because you're going to hit a wall at some point where the AI systems just keep generating bad code and they do not understand how your code is set up. Maybe my opinion might change. Maybe they'll come out with like a brand new model that generates code 99% accurate every single time with any project that you point it to. But from what I've seen, it does generate a lot of bad code and you have to come back through and you have to give it more specific corrections and you have to give it more context. And the only way you're going to do that is if you know what the heck you're doing to begin with. So with all this being said, I think us as software engineers and software developers, like we just need to stay positive and try to be optimistic that these tools will actually help us just become better at doing our jobs and they won't necessarily replace us. Because I think if you have a negative perspective and you start letting all of these negative posts on you know social media and these negative posts on YouTube, it's just going to prevent you from being successful. And no matter what, like if you look at technology, Anything that can be automated will eventually be automated. It's just a matter of like, is it going to get automated away in your lifetime? Or maybe it's going to take 50 or 100 years to get automated. Who knows? No one can predict the future. Who knows? Maybe these LLMs will reach a ceiling. And no matter how much computational power we throw at the problem, it just won't get better. Maybe it'll just continuously hallucinate bad code. And we will just have to keep on fixing it. And all AI is going to do is just help us move a little bit faster but not necessarily replace our ability to write the code itself. Anyway, I hope this video will age well and it won't just get picked up in three years from the YouTube algorithm and people will laugh at me for my, my bad prediction. Don't become discouraged. I have used AI a lot in coding. And again, it's just not there yet. You still need someone who understands 
how to interact with the code and read it and approve it. All right, that's about it. So I do have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join. If you want to find a place to kind of hang out and talk to other developers or just send me a message in Discord, you can do that too. Yeah, I guess good luck. Stay employed. Have a good day and happy coding.